Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. Today I'd like to take you on a bit of a journey to getting excellent shoes for very modest prices. Now as you know, uh, if you've watched the channel for some time, I'm somebody who likes to squeeze every penny from each pound that I spend, particularly when it comes to men's style. And what you put on your feet is possibly some of the most expensive things that you have in your wardrobe. There is this old saying that you should spend as much on your shoes as you spend on your suit. So it could be an expensive business, but it doesn't have to be. It is possible to find good quality shoes at modest prices, as long as you can get over a few of those old hang-ups, like you know, being too concerned about buying shoes that have been owned by somebody else before. Now I'm a big fan of using eBay to source my shoes because you can get some great bargains even if you're not prepared to spend much money at all. And I've, got, I've had some fantastic deals and bargains over the years, and I've actually had some really good deals and bargains in the last few days on eBay, and I shall be making some more videos going forward showing you about some of those great classic shoes I've bought for very modest amounts of money. And today is one such example. Now, I've bought a pair of shoes, a pair of semi-brogues off eBay. They don't look anything too pretty at all right now. I think you'll agree. This is a pair of shoes that looked like it had a bit of a hard life. These shoes cost £24.99 from eBay. And they are, in fact, uh, they're a pair of shoes made by uh, Jones the Bootmakers, so it's a British manufacturer. Um, whether or not they manufactured these shoes or they outsourced them to another one of the larger shoe manufacturers up in Northampton, Kettering Way, which is more likely because Jones were part of the church group of shoe uh, manufacturers. So it's quite possibly shoes are manufactured in the church factory at some point and then rebadged with Jones bootmakers at some point. But these cost £24.99. And this is an all leather British made pair of shoes. Um, it, it did have a leather sole at one point, but it's been replaced or covered with a rubber uh, sole protector, which is great in the UK in the winter, I guess. But there's plenty, plenty of wear left in these shoes. It's got a good year welted sole anyway. So should I need to replace that sole, it would be ultimately achievable at a modest price from any cobblers who's able to do that. So I'm going to take these pair of shoes over to my work table and I'm going to take them from this rather unloved stage to the stage that I would be prepared to wear them into a job interview or any situation where I want to make a killer first impression on the people I meet. You'll be amazed how easy it is to do how little money it's going to cost on top of the $24.99 when you factor in the, the products that we use. And uh, let's get to it. Okay, so here they are. And here are these lovely Jones the Bootmakers. Well, they're semi-brogues, obviously a nice semi-brogue. Um, standard Oxford lacing with a cap toe which has got broguing on the medallion and then across the seam and as you can see actually uh, around the sort of detailing of the shoe it is brogued as well and underneath um, all leather sole good you welted but the sole at some point obviously has worn through and the shoe's been taken to a repair uh, shop where a uh, replacement rubber sole has been nailed on and also stuck on. But it's a good solid sole. Bearing in mind, uh, you know, this shoe did not cost a huge amount of money. I think it was uh, 26 pounds or so. So, you know, not a bad little uh, pickup there, really, when you think about the cost of expensive all leather shoes. Now, Jones, the bootmakers, don't know who's produced these. They've probably been contracted out to a much larger shoe manufacturer quite possibly churches, because we know that uh, Jones has a relationship with churches, but more about that in a minute. But let's get started on the renovation of these shoes. So I'm gonna take away the left-hand one, and we'll use that as a comparator at the end, just to show how we've got on. Now the laces are a bit, uh, unfortunately, worn out on these, so in this instance, I am gonna take the laces out. Now I don't always take the laces out when I'm uh, sort of polishing and, rejuvenating shoes simply because you know it's it's an unnecessary stress on the the eyelets of the shoe and the laces as well but those laces i am going to replace those i've got a a new set of laces which will uh, take the place of that one in just a moment so the first thing i'm going to do 
is I'm going to place a shoe former or a shoe tree inside that shoe because it helps me as I'm working on it to have you know the shoe in its proper shape and something from the inside helping me maintain that shape. So I just get that to fit in there and it's a good solid fit and now the creasing has been you know lessened and I can see where I am. Now the leather here is not in too bad a condition, hopefully you can see okay to a degree, but uh, that said you know I don't know what polish has been placed on it up to this stage so the first thing I want to do is to strip off any old polish or any old polishing materials that have been on this shoe. And the ideal product for that is Safia Renomat. Now Safia Renomat is basically a, a stripper um, of some kind which removes old polish from your shoes, gets you back to a blank canvas. It needs to be shaken, I've given it a good shake in advance. This is a brand new bottle, in fact in preparation for this little video I realized I'd used up all of my Rena mat on a previous pair of shoes. So it's a simple product to use. All you need is a cloth and in this case I'm just using an old terry cloth uh, and you just get it into a suitable sort of ball. You place it onto the cloth, a lot goes a long way, and then you just apply it to the shoe. And you apply it and as you can see almost immediately vast quantities of polish are being removed from the shoe which will make life a lot easier for me when it comes to the repair of the, the work that's been done on this shoe. Now this can be a time consuming process, absolutely. So when we've applied the Reno mat, we know that we'll have a good solid foundation underneath of just the leather. We're not applying polish on old polishing material which is of inferior quality. So there we go, now we've renomatted the shoes and the cloth has just you know taken off loads and loads of old polish so we know that we have stripped that all off. Now at this point I always saddle soap the shoe because the renomat is obviously uh, gone onto the leather, it's a stripping agent, it doesn't uh, mix very well with polish and I like to make sure that the renomat has been removed at the same time as you know treating the shoe to the first layer of treatment that we're going to apply and that's I use saddle soap. Now this is uh, Sophia's own saddle soap, Sophia, um, I've already used their Reno mat, but Sophia, um, if you've ever seen any of the shoes that I've worked on before, I always use Sophia because it is a very high quality shoe care product which has a really good range of you know pretty much everything you need to do to your shoes from stripping to polishing and they all adhere to my exacting high standards to be honest, I've never been let down by them and saddle soap is a very good product as well. Now you can buy saddle soaps in all different manufacturers, it is essentially just a soap, uh, so the way that I apply this, very simple, you get yourself some warm water, all this is here is warm water in a bowl, a little bowl of warm water, my saddle soap, I just reach over and I'll get myself a little brush, this is just you know, a synthetic brush that I paid a pound for in a, in a pound shop. Um, I just dab it into the water, I get some saddle soap onto the end of the brush, bit more water on there and then you just, you essentially using the water and the saddle soap, all you do is shampoo the shoes. Essentially it's like taking your shoes to the, the hairdressers, you give them a good shampoo and what we're doing here is we're removing any of the you know detritus or dirt and I can see it splashing everywhere but that's fine it's a waterproof uh, surface and we just build up that lather and we give the shoe a real good brushing over to make sure that it's clean uh, and also we've removed any of that renomat which as I say will not marry very well with uh, the polish and the other products we're about to apply. So we've given that a good going over. Now there's no need to hang around or thoroughly uh, damp down the shoe, all we need to do is to wipe that off and again you can see the filth and the muck that's coming off this pair of shoes which has been loosened up by the Reno mat and now by using the saddle soap, oh, get rid of some of this, by using the saddle soap we've also got that off the leather as well, leaving us with a far better product underneath so that when we come to do our next stages, which are the important ones, we will have a nice clean shoe underneath 
with which to work with. So obviously we've just got it wet. So what we're gonna do is just leave it for a few minutes uh, whilst I clear up. And when we come back, the shoe will be dry and ready for the next stage. Right, now we've left the shoe stand for about five minutes. And as you can see, it's nice and dry. I can see that the leather is ready for the next stage of rejuvenation. And that starts for me with this stuff here. And this is Sophia Renovator, they call it, or Renovator, if you're, non -a, if you're a non-Francophile. And <coughs> essentially, it's a conditioning cream, um, which is well used. I use this one all the time. This is great stuff to use. It applies some oils and waxes to the shoe, hydrates the shoe, conditions it, we must never forget that the shoe is made of leather and leather was a living thing and hydration and feeding is something which is important in life. But the leather also requires that now that we've reduced it into a pair of shoes. So we apply the Renovator by using, and I'm just going to use a piece of cotton cloth, nothing more. This is an old shirt, uh, which I have just cut down. Um, and when I keep any old shirts, I make sure I cut them down, wrap it around the finger. We just dip the finger into the Renovator and we apply it to the shoe. And you know, there is no more of a complexity to this thing than that. So all we're doing now is applying the Renovator all over the shoe. Now this pair of shoes, as I say, bought on eBay for um, just a touch over 25 pounds, I think it was. Uh, it may most likely have been lying in the back of somebody's wardrobe for many years and hasn't had any love or attention. So what we need to do is just give it a good hydrating. Now you can see at this point, hopefully, that some of the Renovator has gone into the holes of the broguing. That's absolutely not a problem. It'll dry very quickly. And when we come to brush the Renovator off, um, that will all make its way off the shoe when we apply the brush to the shoe and bring it back to life. Now Renovator, you can use it all around, all around the welting of the shoe, um, around the leather of the sole. It does the same for leather, whether it's the upper or the lower. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't apply this to the sole in any way, but it's certainly something which just benefits leather. Um, and you know, you can just keep applying it. Um, particularly if the pair of shoes is very uh, lacking in hydration. It hasn't been conditioned for a long time. And you can tell, you know, when leather is quite dry in nature. So you can, you know, you can't put, you can't over apply too much Renovator. Um, so if the shoe is very old and very sort of dry, you can apply three, four coats, whatever you need. You can apply it very thickly and leave it overnight so that the Renovator steeps into the leather if you wish. Uh, what I'm saying is you can't overdose on Renovator. So don't worry about applying it thickly. Just keep working it in until it all disappears into the leather. Because in the next stage, anything that hasn't found a home in the leather will be removed when we apply the brush. So there we go. We've given that a good spot of Renovator. And just what we need to do now is just leave that for just a few minutes for the Renovator to dry and we can tell because it will have adopted something of a dull color, uh, a dull luster on the shoe, ready for us to take it off with the brush. So here we go. Shoe has now had about five minutes in which to settle and dry. And I'm just going to apply the brush to get any of that material which hasn't already found a place in the leather and remove it so that the next stage of conditioning and preparation for this pair of shoes uh, is going to be clear of any old detritus from the previous stage. This is a simple 100% horsehair brush, uh, can be bought anywhere inexpensively, 15 pounds from a shoe care shop in London I bought this, had it for years, worth making a little bit of an investment in a good brush. So all I'm gonna do is apply the brush to this pair of shoes. Now any of that Renovator, which hasn't um, been uh, you know worked into the leather at this stage will be taken off with the brush so that we're ready at the next stage and this is quite an easy process already I can see that the leather uh, is starting to get a little bit of a luster on it because as I say the Renovator it has waxes it has oils within it which are designed to hydrate and condition the shoe, but at the same time, obviously, as you can see, they give it a little bit of a shine there, a little bit of a shine, starting to look better already. 
already. Toe caps uh, a little bit gnarly, you know, there's no, no gashes or cuts or anything like that, but it'll certainly benefit from some wax polish in a moment. But before we come to the wax polish, there's another stage which I like to do, and that is cream polish. Uh, now cream polish is something that people often overlook when it comes to the, the, the maintenance and looking after of shoes. Many people jump straight into the wax polish stage, or so all they ever apply to their shoes is wax polish. But cream polish is the key factor really in maintaining and hydrating and conditioning a pair of shoes. Because it's a cream, it has a quite high level of pigmentation. So if your shoes are coloured, uh, by using a cream it will certainly you know, return some of the colour which may be leached away by, you know, exposure to ultraviolet light on a daily basis or, you know, exposure to water, um, salts on the pavement, things like that. So a cream polish will definitely uh, bring colour back to the shoe and at the same time it will hydrate it and condition it. Now this is another uh, Safia product. This is Safia Pomodia Cream Polish. Comes in a whole host of colours. Easy today, I'm using black, so there's no worries about matching any colors. Uh, but again, cool. it, when you take the lid off, uh, you're reminded of the fact that Sophia uh, is a non-petroleum based product. So it's got a very almost natural f uh, smell to it, which reminds you that, you know, it, it, it can't be that harsh for the shoe. Um, so again, getting my same piece of cloth back, just gonna wrap it around the finger. And in exactly the same fashion that we applied the Renovator, I am just gonna use my two fingers, dip it into the cream polish, and apply it over the surface of the shoe in small circular uh, motion into the leather with the goal, obviously, of driving that cream polish into the leather almost massaging it in. Take your time, you know, massage it, particularly into the areas where they're creasing across this part of the shoe here, known as the vamp, where the, uh, the toe cap, you know, between the toe cap and the lacing system, your shoe almost certainly will crease there where your foot bends naturally. So spend some time making sure that the cream polish has been absorbed into the leather because you know I can already see although it's a black shoe and sometimes it's hard to see when black has been polished because you know black is black but uh, shoes which even black shoes which have been used for a long time and haven't been looked after you know will have had color leached away uh, you can apply it to the heel block as well of course the heel block in this case like most good quality shoes is made up of layers of leather so you know apply it on there and as I say, it's quite hydrating for the shoe. It's good for the shoe, the leather, and it helps with any little burrs or scuffs. It'll certainly assist you in polishing them away. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long to cover the whole shoe because shoes are not that big at the end of the day. Go around the welt, around where the, where the shoe meets the sole um, as much as you can, and just make sure that that's all worked into the into the leather again you can go around it more than once if you wish working it in you can't over apply this stuff because once that's dried which will only take a moment or two we will again apply the brush and remove any material which has not found a home so just a short period of time now has lapsed just a moment or two the brush comes back out and in exactly the same way as we removed any unnecessary renovator all we're going to do is now go over the shoe with the brush, removing any of that cream polish, which hasn't been worked into the leather, uh, and we're going to remove it. We're going to remove it quite simply, just like that. Now, many people will stop at this stage. They will stop at this stage because this level of luster on a shoe will be plenty for them, and they don't feel the need to go any further than this. And this would be a, you know, a very good level of maintenance uh, polishing for your shoes if you were quite happy uh, to have this level of polish, which I would imagine would be better than the vast majority of people in the population who I dare say don't look after their shoes very well at all. But there we go. That's a pair of shoes now which has been, well, we've had the old polish stripped off. We have, uh, we have saddle soaked it. Now the saddle soaping in itself would have left behind some of the waxes and oils which are in the saddle soap. So we're starting to prepare the shoe, 
to get better. Uh, we've applied Renovator, which has hydrated the shoe. It's returned some of that moisture, some of that hydration, which would have been removed by using the Renomat. Uh, so uh, the Renovator has replaced that. And then we have now used the Pomodia cream polish, just a, a color enhancing cream polish, which again conditions the shoe and gives it a lovely luster, hopefully as you can see there. So it's looking good already, looking a lot better, but we can take it one level further. Or oh, in fact, two levels, we're gonna use wax polish. Uh, and this is where the wax polish is about to come in. So another Sophia product, this is Sophia's um, they call it, let's have a look, I forget, Medal Dior cream polish. So, um, sorry, wax polish. Sophia does a number of different levels of polish and this is the premium brand, the Medal Dior, because it, I think it won a medal in 1925 in Paris. Uh, it's a French product. Um, and again, when you open the tin, you're reminded of a similar uh, fragrance to the cream polish. It's not petroleum based, unlike many of the polishes on the market today. So. The application of this couldn't be much simpler either. We get our cloth back again. And all we do now at this stage is we wrap it around our finger for one more time. And we just rub our fingers into that, that wax polish, as you can see, getting it onto the polish rag. And we apply it in exactly the same fashion as we've done several times today already in the last half an hour. And we cover that leather using that wax polish. Now we don't need to be you know, too liberal with this uh, because the wax polish goes a long way and you know, it doesn't take a great deal to cover the shoe, which is great because the wax polish lasts a long time. Uh, it's not particularly expensive, this stuff, Sophia. I mean, you know, I, it's a lot more expensive than the budget stuff that you'll find in shoe shops, but ultimately you get what you pay for and you'll find that when you buy some Sophia polish or some other Sophia products, they will last a long time. And whilst they're in your possession, they will serve you exceptionally well. So it's one of those things I think in life costs a little bit more you know, uh, perhaps a tin of polish will cost you 10, 12 pounds, whatever. Uh, but it's something which you make, you know, you purchase once every few years, unless you are some sort of fastidious shoe preparer, uh, and it'll last you plenty of time. So what we've done there, we have now applied that wax polish all over the shoe, uh, and we've covered the leather with the wax polish. In essence, the shoe's been prepared now by doing the cream polish and the Renovator. This wax polish is applying a protective covering, a coat over the shoe so that uh, should it get wet, should it get splashed, should you get salt from the pavement on your shoe in the winter time, um, you know, ultraviolet light beats down on the shoe in the summertime and all of these things are the enemy of leather. Uh, they're the enemy of any natural product, in fact. But by applying that wax polish, it's a protective overcoat for the shoe. Now it's dried whilst I've been talking. What we need to do now is get our good friend the brush back and we apply the brush for one last time to the exterior of the shoe. And we see a very deep lustrous shine uh, uh, coming to that shoe. Not only does the wax polish give a protective coating to the shoe, but it gives a lustrous sheen to the shoe as well, which is what gives it that wonderful, that wonderful shine, which is so coveted, of course, in the shoe world. Uh, everybody likes a shiny pair of shoes. It's what, you know, obtains compliments uh, from strangers. And it's just that thing which says to other people, you're a person who looks after yourself, looks after your appearance. It says a lot about your character, because if you can look after your shoes, you can look after other things in life. Uh, and it's so important in making a fantastic first impression, having a well-prepared pair of shoes. Now, as you can see, that pair of shoes has now been polished, it's been conditioned, it's been stripped of old polish. It's looking pretty damn good, I hope you'll agree. We've now waxed the shoe, we've cream polished the shoe, we've prepared the shoe. There's one more layer that we can go and that's to apply a mirror shine to the toe cap. It makes a fantastic first impression when you meet people and it shows that you're somebody who takes care and looks after your footwear. And to help us in that process, I'm gonna use some Sophia Mirror Gloss. Now this is a product which really helps in the building of that wax mirror shine. 
So a mirror shine is basically layer after layer of polish built up on the toe cap, uh, and only the toe cap I would suggest, because if we were to apply, uh, try to build up a mirror shine on any of the areas of the shoe where the shoe flexes, of course, when we, when we wear it, the first time after we've built up that layers of polish, the flexing will cause the mirror shine to crack and fall away even. So we apply it simply to the areas which aren't flexed. So toe caps, hind quarters. Personally, I tend only to do it to the toe caps. And let's show you how it's done. So Safia Mirror Gloss is basically um, a polish very similar to the wax polish, but with less moisture within it. So it's easier to build up layer after layer of wax on the toe cap to give you that mirror shine. Now, me personally, how I like to do it, I like to use a cosmetic cotton pad. Some people like to use their cloth built around, uh, wound around their finger to build up that layer after layer. For me, a cotton pad, and all I do, I get some water, and in this case, I'm just using a normal spritzer bottle, just applying some water to that pad, and I'm gonna fold the pad into a little bit of a wad. So I've got a nice little wad in my hand, and all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rub that wad, get plenty of polish onto that wad, and I'm going to apply that polish to the toe cap by just going round and round and applying the polish to the leather of the shoe. And all we do is do that over and over again, bringing the polish up to almost a shine so that uh, it allows us to keep building up those layers, layer after layer. And I just keep going and going at that until I've built up several layers of polish and we've got a bit of a shine starting to form on that toe cap. So I'm just gonna carry on with this, come back in a little while and I will show you how we're getting on. Okay, so welcome back. I'm just applying last layer of polish to the shoe just to give it that lovely mirror shine and it's gone on quite well. There are a few little abrasions on the, on the toe cap here, but in reality, you know, from the distance that you see your shoes, these will be unnoticeable. And let's not forget, this pair of, you know, handmade British leather shoes, originally produced either by or for Jones the bootmaker, uh, cost less than 25 pounds. And what can you get for 25 pounds when it comes to men's footwear? I suggest to you, practically nothing of any quality at all. Now, Jones the Bootmaker, um, a bit of an interesting history. They were uh, initiated in 1857 as a, as a company when a husband and wife team, Alfred and Emma Jones, uh, started shoe uh, production. Um, they were a, a large family. There were 11 sons and three daughters. And nine of those sons apprenticed as shoemakers. And they all ended up going into a sort of family business with a number of different shops. Uh, and that is what became Jones the Bootmakers. Now, over the years, um, they have produced shoes, and I think you know it would be fair to say um, that uh, other manufacturers have pro pro provided shoes for Joneses in their shops, uh, but they are still in existence today. They have been sold on a number of times over the years. In fact, for quite a large portion of their history in the 20th century, they were uh, owned... Uh, by the Church Shoe Corporation, the very, uh, you know, the big player in shoe men, uh, men's shoe wear in the UK. Uh, and, you know, I think when Church sold out to Prada, um, I think it div Prada divested itself of the Jones bootmakers element of the business, and hence they went out on their own uh, and were bought up by somebody else. So, you know, I, I couldn't tell you the heritage of this pair of shoes, all I can tell you is I paid £24.99 for them off eBay. They're leather, they're a good year welted shoe, uh, and as you can see, they've had a new sole, but ultimately, you know, here we are. I have spent, uh, let me have a look, just check the camera time. I've spent 40 minutes up to this point. Uh, some of it you wouldn't have seen on camera, of course, because I, I shut the camera uh, off when I was doing a lot of the laborious, mon monotonous stuff, because I didn't want to totally uh, kill your interest in this, but I, Stripped the shoe down, I've washed it with saddle soap, I've conditioned it, I have applied shoe cream to rejuvenate the colour, I've applied wax polish to uh, protect it, and now I've brought the toe cap up to a mirror shine using um, the Sophia mirror shine. 
which has done a good job. I mean, you know, in about 10 minutes of work, I hope you can see, I have given this pair of shoes a lovely shine on that toe cap, which uh, is really bringing the shoe to life. And I'm sure if I walked into a room now for a job interview or to meet somebody for the first time, and as, you know, it, you know, instinctively as people do, they look you head to toe. And when the eyes rest upon these shoes with that shine, the person meeting you for the first time is left with no misunderstanding that you're a person who takes uh, sartorial elegance importantly, that you look good, you have taken time to bring your shoes up to this level of shine, and that you're a person who, you know, can be trusted to look after the details. That's the important thing with shoe preparation. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today, showing me taking you uh, on a journey with this pair of shoes, very inexpensive, 25 pound shoes, um, second hand off eBay, leather soles, but with a, a rubber cap underneath. Um, and now it's, you know, much, much improved. And I'll take some photographs in natural light. I'm gonna shove a new pair of laces in there and I'll compare it to the old pair. Uh, sorry, the, its friend, the left hand shoe, which has not had any treatment whatsoever undertaken. And as you can see, not just on that mirror shine on the toe cap, the whole situation looks entirely different, does it not? One is prepared, is looking good, is something you could, you know, you could meet the queen with to a pair of shoes with this shine on them. This is the sort of pair of shoes that you put into a bin. Uh, so with a little bit of work, a little bit of effort and a few products, you can keep your shoes looking like this all the time. And it doesn't take that much effort. And to be honest, it's a quite cathartic, enjoyable experience to keep your shoes in that sort of condition. Very satisfying. I recommend it entirely. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Well, there we go, folks. We took a gnarly pair of secondhand shoes that cost £24.99. And now we have a shiny, lustrous, beautiful mirror shine on this pretty damn good looking pair of semi brogues, which to be perfectly honest, you could wear in any situation where you wanna make a good impression on the people that you meet. And it didn't cost that much money at all, did it really at the end of the day? And a little bit of my time, maybe 45 minutes, and now I'd be happy to wear that anywhere. So it can be done. You don't have to stretch the budget to get good quality shoes. You certainly don't have to spend the same amount that you do on your suit unless you only pay 25 pounds for a suit. And if that's the case, you're probably watching the wrong channel. Now, if you are watching this channel, I hope you've enjoyed this video. So please do give me a, a thumbs up as a like, subscribe to the videos while you're there and you'll get the content that we produce in the future without missing any of the future videos and leave me a comment in the comment section below. I always really love to hear what you have to say. So until the next time, please stay safe Look after yourselves and we'll meet again soon here at the Chaps Guide.